Hello everyone. So in this video, I'm going to continue working on my final piece for this Pride Week showcase in 2022. So if you watched the third video of the Pride Week showcase series that I created, you'll know that this is the piece that I am talking about. And this piece is pretty different. It pretty much deviates from a normal piece that I would personally normally create. But that's a good thing because I am challenging myself creatively. And well, this is a, a real challenge for me to and probably for a lot of other artists also to work with something like this, something with media that are so different. But for me as someone who does a lot of mixed media work in the first place, I know that I can turn this into something workable that can possibly be visually appealing. I may have to use non-traditional means to turn this into something that I can be proud of. But for the duration of this video, I guess I'm going to go through that process. So when it comes to a lot of drawings where I have a lot of black charcoal in the mixed media piece, I often like to combine it with other media, obviously. And so what I do a lot of the time is use either a conte stick. I believe that's how you pronounce it, conte. And it's basically um, almost clay-like color. This is technically charcoal, but a compressed form of charcoal that has this reddish brownish hue. And I also use another type of compressed charcoal stick. This one is just white charcoal. And of course, this can be used to either pop out of the seas of black here, or you can basically combine it in with the rest of the charcoal. Obviously, if I make any mistakes, I or I just want to add more black into the mix, I will keep using this charcoal stick. But at the end, I normally also integrate a little bit of graphite. So this is a, I guess this is a mechanical graphite artist pencil. And so this is something that I would use at the very end of the process once I feel satisfied with the rest of what I've done on a sea of black charcoal. Or it may be the only other media that I use on top of the black charcoal. And finally, of course, I have this needed eraser, which is what you normally use to work with charcoal to try to mold it into shape. And this is by far probably the tool that I will use the most other than the charcoal stick, the actual black charcoal stick. When it comes to playing around with the black charcoal mask that I have, over here. So starting back from where I left off in the previous video, essentially I wanted to keep making more of these charcoal marks, I guess just expand the charcoal area a little bit. And then that's when I began using the white charcoal stick to create these I figures in the in a sense and 
really, I started to become pretty uncomfortable with the more eyes that I put in the piece. And so that's why I just habitually smudged it all together within the black charcoal background. <laughs> But eventually, I began to also draw these sort of intrusive hands to essentially signify just intrusion as a whole. Just the fact that society is either intrusive or with the introduction of these angry mouths says a little too much about trans people, about queer people, about intersex people, just overall about our community, our bodies, etc. And finally, I drew these, I guess, to my mind, these were essentially supposed to be handcuffs, which essentially represent the social mores that we face in society as a community. Basically, the fact that we can't even take ownership of our bodies without input from those outside of our community. And so, as you can see here, I began to use the Conte sticks to basically re-emphasize these different symbols. And as I mentioned, before, I like using these Conte sticks just because they look so different from the charcoal background and at the same time, they also can actually smudge inside the charcoal background, like in this case. But of course, I also use the graphite, which isn't as easily smudgeable in a way. <laughs> And this is what I used to create these, to basically recreate all that other symbolism, the symbolism regarding the handcuffs and right now the symbolism regarding the angry mouths that do not mind their own business. And so you can see that even though I tried to smudge everything into the background, you can still clearly see that the Graphite is very much visible. And right now, I was at this point drawing the eye shape. And then finally, I was drawing the invasive hand shape. And for these graphite, this graphite portion, I pretty much tried to go with realism, but I wanted to be a bit more subversive in a way. And I really did that just to keep the focus on the abstraction and, of course, keep the focus on the subjects which I am drawing at this point. And so, basically, I chose to draw two figures that were tired and weary. And essentially, this is a really familiar concept within the queer, trans, and intersex communities. The fact that we face so much social pressure, so much societal pressure from just every single aspect of our lives. But at least at the end of the day, for the most part, we do have each other. We do have our own kin. We have these friends that are essentially our chosen family. We have these communities that, for the most part, keep a strong bond, a strong relationship with us. And although there is a lot of infighting at times, at the end of the day, we have each other and that is what matters the most. And so for this portion of the drawing, I decided that the pride flag itself, that should be the foreground. And so I tried to do a little bit of realism in a sense. 
And in all honesty, this really is what a lot of the queer, trans, and intersex community feels like at times. The fact that our safe space is pretty ragged, pretty rough around the edges in certain places, in certain parts of our community. But at the same time, it is our safe space. It is where we have our proverbial home, our chosen family. So I guess I decided to go a more figurative route when it came to the intricate details of this drawing. And I ended up turning the pride flag into a landscape while I guess the trans flag as well as the brown and black stripes ended up being a part of a part of the sky in a sense. And then of course, as you probably saw in the time lapse. I did have a bunch of different figures as well in the darker area, including, I guess, an eye, well, a series of eyes, as well as a series of hands almost invasively, almost invasively trying to grab the two figures in a sense, and then just the disappointing stares coming from the eyes. And finally, mouths that I guess I wanted to show that the mouths were angry, maybe saying really bad things about these two figures that I ended up creating. And I guess the next steps would be to give these figures, give the landscape as well as the sky a lot more definition than they have right now. So in continuing this drawing, I did want to include a few more details. And basically, I did my best to accomplish that using the charcoal, the black charcoal stick. and. So the thing with black charcoal, well, with charcoal in general, especially if it's not exactly that compressed, is that it spreads around a lot, which can be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on your application. But for the most part, since charcoal is one of the media that I am the most familiar with, I know exactly what I wanted to do or accomplish with it. And so, as you can see here, I was in the continuous process of essentially applying more charcoal and then at the same time, smudging the charcoal around. And so, as you will see, I did end up repeating this process for, for a while, actually. It really did take up the majority of the remainder of my time in drawing this piece. But at the same time, I do tend to be a perfectionist. <laughs> and so, of course, for me, I wanted to keep smudging, to keep applying more charcoal, and eventually to erase some of that charcoal until I saw the piece as something that I could be proud of. And so as you can see here, I am absolutely in the middle of that entire process of combating my perfectionism, which is something that I am trying to work on, but it's also pretty much the reason why I rarely work on anything realistic because of the fact that I will try to make 
something like through the life and then I end up failing in that in doing that but at the same time I end up creating something that I do like and that's sort of what happened here in the sense that I didn't necessarily make such a realistic piece at the end of this which you can see around the end of this video but I definitely made a piece that conveys exactly what I wanted all of these different marks that I worked on for hours to convey and so as you can see here I ended up realizing that maybe the trans flag as well as the people of color stripes should probably be the sky should just be the background of the photo and so of course at the beginning of this entire process I had the baby pink essentially serve as the madness background and then that's why I ended up having the rest of the trans flag as well as the black and brown stripes serve as the sky and of course I am deep into that process once again when it comes to perfectionism but eventually I realized that in a piece that's supposed to show societal pressures in a way about how dark they can be about how constraining they could be maybe it wasn't such a bad idea to have the piece overall be darker in nature just to not have the kind of contrast that I'm used to having in my pieces and so I just allowed that to stay and basically not try to mess with it by trying to erase more of the charcoal work that I had already done at that point which is why I really just focus on the figures themselves and so to provide at least somewhat of a contrast I made the decision to have these figures pretty much colored in with Prismacolor pencils and I am by the way really happy about using Prismacolor pencils whenever I can especially since this particular set that you're looking at is around eight years old I purchased them for my first ever drawing class back in 2014 and so I absolutely love those pencils I've only lost maybe like one or two of the actual pencils but anyway as you can see I am pretty familiar with how to use the pencils and so you can see that even though I am I tend to have these perfectionist tendencies at least I know what I'm doing in terms of applying the pencils and then of course also applying the graphite because I thought that I would I thought that I would just give a give the figures a nice look to have that contrast as well to have the contrast of the graphite hair and then being colored in with the colored pencils but finally when it came to the drawing I decided that maybe the figures should have a bright yellowish glow just to show that the figures are in fact persevering even though they are tired they're weary they are on this really rocky plain terrain they still shine bright because of the fact that they were able to get through everything to get through these societal pressures 
to get through in spite of everything that surrounds them and in spite of everything that they have had to go through as a chosen family, as the people who have each other. And that's what a lot of the queer, trans, and intersex community seems to feel like. And finally, I decided to apply these metallic inks that I have, that I've used in previous pieces simply because I love the look of metallic ink. And I pretty much love the fact that I can just splatter them around as sort of a finish in a sense for the drawing. And so this is really the fun part for me, just the unpredictability of these different inks. So with this piece, I pretty much wanted to explore the concept of the chosen family, which is often used in queer and trans and intersex discourse just throughout our community to describe this situation in which we find each other, we seek comfort in each other, and we essentially consider each other either a second family or the primary family that we have in the case that unfortunately many trans intersex and queer people have in that our own biological families are often not understanding or outright prejudiced against us. And so I wanted to explore that concept in this particular piece. And so to me, the subjects, for instance, they are surrounded by all of this ambiguity in this area, while the charcoal area here hosts just a variety of angry mouths, invasive hands, or just peering eyes it are the way that I would describe these different figures that are located in this area. But at the same time, as you can see, they, the subjects are emanating light. And to me, that represents the fact that they are living in their truths. And even though they definitely appear exhausted and just overall fatigued by everything that surrounds them, at least in this particular space, you can imagine that this is their safe space, that their communities, their trans community, their queer community, essentially are holding them up. That's, and that's sort of why I wanted the different pride flag colors to be placed in here. But I guess what I, didn't realize was that I was going to turn this into a landscape sort of drawing in that the trans flag would end up being part of the part of the background, the overall sky, while the queer pride flag colors would end up being part of the foreground. But overall I am absolutely happy and ecstatic about the fact that I, first off I was able to finally complete this piece because intellectually speaking as well as in terms of application I really had no idea what I was going to do with the charcoal kind of vignette that's surrounding these different pride flag colors but as you can see, at least there are a lot of different ways that visually speaking, everything is working together. And there are also a lot of ways in which just the simple fact that I have these subjects in this position 
already tells a whole story about what they're experiencing and hopefully what this piece can do, even though it may not necessarily be the most realistic piece or the most abstract piece either. What it can hopefully do is at least lead you, the viewer, to be able to relate to this. And if you are part of the queer, trans, and intersex communities, hopefully you can relate to this on the very most basic levels when it comes to your experiences in life and what you have been going through in life. While if you aren't a part of our communities or you're interested in becoming an ally, hopefully this piece sort of leads you to the insight that we have to deal with all of these different societal pressures kind of squeezing into our spaces. But at the end of the day, we have each other, we have our chosen family. And we are absolutely happy and proud to be ourselves at the end of the day. So that wraps up just this entire video. And so thank you very much for watching this video and watching this series so far. If you have been able to take the time and had the energy to watch my previous videos. So absolutely, thank you so much and goodbye for now.